in all honesty, I'm a little taken aback by the amount of interest I've been receiving. I never thought I would ever get this much when I first started. I mean, I was expecting one or two matches at most over the course of a couple months. I was literally <laughs> able to get one to two matches over the course of the first two days. Yeah, and girls were coming to you. Remember that? I think, is that what happened? And you were like, whoa. Yeah, I didn't even true. I mean, I feel like a woman right now because I'm the one who's getting all the interest. I thought it was the other way around. I thought men had a lot of trouble. <laughs> Uh, I messed that up. Ugh. I think it's more stage fright than overthinking. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. Just really think. It's just us. Hey guys, and welcome to another one of these videos where I have one of my clients here shares his story. Um, and I'm really excited for you guys to listen to this one. Uh, this is Miles. Hi, Miles. Thank you so much for being here. How are you doing? Oh, thank you so much for having me. Doing fine. Best I can <laughs> in these times. Right? <laughs> and for those of you watching, no matter when you're watching this, when he says these times, this is during the pandemic, so things are a little different during this time. But even during so, he found his own dating success in it. Um, so really excited for you to hear about this story. So let's just hop in. Um, so can you tell everyone a little bit more about who you are, where you started, your experience, and kind of where you are now? Yeah, hello everyone. My name's Miles. I'm 28 years old. I live in Henderson, Nevada. And my career, I am a real estate salesperson, but I'm studying to be a broker at the moment. And as far as dating experience, before all this started and before I got into the program, it's kind of a mix. I had a serious relationship. It didn't quite work out. A couple of flings and a lot of times I've been put in the friend zone because I don't think I've made my intentions quite clear. <laughs> and now where am I at? I'd say I'm constantly matching with quality women and so many. In fact, I'm having a little trouble keeping up with it all. <laughs> Uh, it's not a bad problem to have, right? It's not <laughs> no, definitely not. I'm um, proud of it. I always, I always remember that that time you you asked me like, how do I make sure like I don't say the wrong thing to the wrong person, or how do I? This is when do I take a break? Do I have to talk yeah, to? Yeah, I even had to ask my friends for advice. I mean, I even asked Ruby, at what point do I stop taking applications? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Applications. That's right. Um, so awesome. I'm so excited that you're here talking to quality ladies. So I'm curious, what was the biggest obstacle that you've overcome or most helpful knowledge you gained you know, during our time? For me, it would have to be learning about how to curb my overthinking through changes in mindset and reframing my thoughts. I kept asking myself way too many questions and I wouldn't take any action as a result. And it definitely got in the way. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Like what kind of um, overthinking or, or, or constant mindsets would you have? Would you be like really down on yourself or would you think the girl's not interested? Like, do you remember what kind of big barriers there were? Yeah, I literally told you my first one was I didn't see myself as worthy. I even said I'm not worthy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did say it just, just like that uh, as well. And that's awesome. So it feels like mindset, um, overcoming, reframing is, is a big one for you. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, definitely. Give us a little summary of how, you know, my guidance has helped you to kind of get these qualities that you have now, the ones that you're texting. Um, I think the most important part for me was you helping me to find my most desirable traits, which kind of in turn had a boosting effect on my confidence and self-esteem. Much needed one at that. <laughs> and now I don't question whether I'm good or not anymore. Yeah. I just know I am. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. I, I think one thing that I'll always remember when we first started talking is you would actually sit there and be like, oh, yeah, I'm this, I'm awkward. I don't know. You remember how you say that? And you'd even describe yeah. yourself as so, right? Um, you would really be down on yourself a lot of times, but you kept saying like, oh, I'm just, I'm just awkward. Um, even with your first virtual date. So kind of speaking on that a little, because during this pandemic, you know, you have to do video calls, phone calls, things like that. So not even meeting a person right away. So 
what was the like experience like for you to go through something that's so already uncomfortable and then you have to do a video call and you felt really awkward how did you kind of own the awkwardness um and all that and continue yeah so with video calls i'll just preface by saying even with my own family it's awkward there's no easy way to do them but when you're mixing it with strangers you've never met before it becomes a lot harder <laughs> and one of the ways Ruby's helped me get over it is owning my mistake. I mean, yeah, I can be awkward in person. I can be awkward over video. I just have to own it and say it as it is. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And even us doing this, which I'm so appreciative of you hopping on camera right now and, and doing it, you know, it's, even though we, after this is all be edited, so who can't see that, but you know, it's you owning, okay, maybe that wasn't right. Okay. That was weird. Oh, let me do it again. But owning it is still important, but you showing up today doing this, that just says a lot about where you've grown, you know, from, from the beginning. So really, really happy for you in that. And I can, I can see it. Um, so do you feel like you are worthy now? Oh, definitely. No <laughs> doubt about it. 110%. Yes. Awesome. Um, so, I mean, tell everyone a little bit about how you're feeling now, you know, in general, in that feeling. In all honesty, I'm a little taken aback by the amount of interest I've been receiving. I never thought I would ever get this much when I first started. I mean, I was expecting one or two matches at most over the course of a couple months. But I was literally <laughs> able to get one to two matches over the course of the first two days. Yeah, and girls were coming to you. Remember that? I think, is that what happened? And you were like, whoa, yeah, I didn't even true. try I mean, it. I feel like a woman right now because I'm the one who's getting all the interest. I thought it was the other way around. I thought men had a lot of trouble. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's, that's awesome. And, I mean, just so the audience knows, you know, we did online dating, of course, because that's what we can do during this pandemic. So we did a lot of talking about strategies and going through your profile, putting up the right photos and all of that, you know, it's, 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 it's quite a task, but as you know, cause you've online dated before, right? I think that's what you yeah, said. I've yeah. done it before. Yeah. And how was it before? I had nowhere near as much success as I did <laughs> now though. That's the one thing I can tell you. <laughs> right. So, so what I want people to hear is it doesn't matter if it was a fail in the past. Cause I feel like a lot of people think, Oh, it didn't work out for me before. It's not going to work again. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it does take someone else kind of coming in being like, hey, this is what, you know, you got to do to fix things up um, and then being open to it, which is what you did. So, you know, online dating can be a hit, guys, even during a pandemic. Just trying to say. Yeah, I mean, I see it as a numbers game. I mean, the more you do it, never give up at it, you know, more yeah. chances. And eventually, you know, I'm hopeful I'm going to find the right woman for me at this rate. Exactly. Exactly. And do you feel more confident in keeping up these conversations, like even via text or phone calls or virtual dates? Um, do you feel pretty confident in that now? Oh, very. I don't even have to try. I just be myself. It works. <laughs> there you go. The advice of just being your yourself. Once again, going back to it, right? Owning it. You know, if you feel any differently to just own it and say how you feel. Um, and like we said, this is different because it's during a pandemic. What do you find? People always talk about the, the, I guess you would say the cons of this all happening and how oh, dating might not work during this time. Um, but what we've actually talked about is how this actually can be good, like talking to people before you're even meeting them. You know, what would you say is an yeah. actual benefit of talking to them for so long before meeting a person? Well, I'd say the benefit is I can kind of weed out in advance before even talking or meeting with them, you know, virtually right. and kind of get a good idea of whether or not we're going to be compatible, whether it's going to work out, whether we have the same goals, whether we have the same aspirations and all that kind of fun stuff. Right, right. Exactly. And talking first actually allows you to emotionally connect before just the physical. So it's always good things about it. Um, so the next thing I want to ask is usually many people are too scared to get this kind of help because it's such a vulnerable topic. I mean, it can feel shameful. Can you speak to that? And what would you say to the people that are thinking, is this weird? You know, is this weird to do? What would you say? I never viewed it as shameful. I just didn't know it actually existed. <laughs> Had I known sooner, I would have been on board. So anyway, to kind of give some backstory, I was browsing through Reddit and I saw and asked me anything. And 
<laughs> Ruby's given answers. And I kind of looked at it. I'm like, this can't be real. This has got to be some kind of joke. Sorry, no offense to you. It's just kind of what yeah, I no thought worries. at the time. Yeah. And then you came back on again, and then I read through some of your responses. I'm like, man, this woman, she knows what she's talking about. I'm <laughs> pretty interested now. That's so awesome. I just kind of said, you know what? I'm not getting any younger. 28th birthday present to myself. Let's do it. That's awesome. So as you said, you don't see it as a shameful thing. Um, why is that? Um. <laughs> Given where I am now, as opposed to three months ago, mm. it's uh, pretty good in terms of uh, self-improvement. I mean, I can definitely see all the stuff I've learned throughout your program, helping me in other areas of life too. That's, that's awesome. So you're saying that why is it shameful to just improve your life? Because that's what, that's what no, it's doing. Of course doing. not. It's, it's, just in, it's just a very specific area in your life, of course, but why is dating um, a shameful area you don't want to, you shouldn't improve on versus like career or fitness or health. Right. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, it's one of those things, the more you work at it, the better you get at it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so what are the reasons you, you notice that this investment, cause it's obviously not a light investment, right? So, so what are the reasons you notice that this investment was worth it when you first said yes? I mean, not long after starting, I was learning a lot about myself and what I wanted. But now I have a very clear picture of who I am and what I want. I couldn't say that before. Mm. And mm. the overwhelming amount of success I've gotten with online dating just kind of icing on the cake. Yeah, yeah. So you're seeing that no matter what you were going to learn, like you're investing and just learning about yourself and wherever that takes you. I mean, it's only a really positive route. Yeah, if you have yeah. any apprehension about it, just do it. I'm kind of a tight ass, and um, I don't regret it one bit. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so usually when people listen to this, they're uh, like kind of on the edge, you know? They're, they're usually on the edge of uh, considering whether they want to jump into it or not. Um, what would you say to, to those guys that are kind of on the edge? I was skeptical at first too. just do it. I mean, I'm not afraid of many people, but I am afraid of Ruby. <laughs> you probably, okay, well, you probably, I mean, I don't know if you should say that because now people are going to be scared to work with me, but I'm just kidding. It's just, it's just because, you know, you, you took this seriously, you know, and you knew by having someone, I guess, coach you, every person that's had some kind of coach, you kind of want to be a little scared by that because that's what pushes you to get your results you know? So yeah, I mean, you're intimidating in a good way. You push me to try harder and be my best self. And that's what I appreciate most about working with you. Oh, that's awesome. And, and the great thing about you is that, yeah, you took it on, you know, every time I gave you feedback, every time I said, Miles, you're doing it again, you're self deprecating yourself, you know, like you're, 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 you're being mean to yourself, you know, you take it, you're like, Oh, yeah, shoot, I'm doing it. Right. So you, you recognize it and you're aware, but I think that's one of the qualities that made you successful was that you do these kind of, I guess you say mindset, you have these mindset barriers, you vocalize it, but when you catch it, you're very aware and you step back and you make change. So last question here actually leads on it. Um, what quality do you think one needs to be successful in this like you, you know, where you are right now, what kind of person, what advice would you give to someone that is going to be working with me, um, qualities that they want to have to make this work for them? Um, starting out, it's a little bit tough. Um, having homework isn't always the best, but if you try your hardest, put it, give it your all and power through it, then it'll be well worth it in the end. Yeah. As you said, it's just about powering through it, right? So, and, and like you said, that's what that's you the did. most important part. It gets hard. There are times where I'm like, you know what, what am I doing here? Then I'm like, you know what? No, end of the day, yes. I need this. Yes. Perseverance. I can't even say that word. Perseverance. And obviously, Perseverance. Uh, <laughs> such a long <laughs> word. It really is um, that word. And also, yes, resilience. And um, like you're saying, I, I love that you mentioned it's not easy. And I tell everyone that even when I hop on like an inquiry call, I say, just because we work together, I don't say it gets easier. 
it gets harder because it, you're doing things that are uncomfortable, right? But you don't give up like you, you know, you didn't give up. And I'm curious, what was your reason for not giving up? What would you tell yourself? Like, what was your why? Well, when I first started, I kind of saw where I was heading and I'm like, you know, I see the light at the end of the tunnel here and I want to go to it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's awesome. All right. So um, before we wrap up here, thank you for sharing all of that. Really, really helpful. Um, any other last words for everyone listening? I'll repeat myself. I don't like repeating myself, but I feel like it needs to be said. If you're apprehensive about it, don't be. Just sign up. You won't regret it. Yes. I love your, uh, it's almost like a, just, just like Nike. Just do it. That's your thing. Just do it. <laughs> oh, I don't want to get into copyright or trademark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your words, not mine. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being here. And I, such an inspirational story because yeah you like I said you you came from a spot where you felt awkward you felt like you didn't really have what it takes you didn't think online would work and now it's so nice to hear every time I talk to you you're like oh yeah I'm talking to these ladies oh I'm gonna have a virtual date later today or a phone call um, so you know all we can hope for is that this pandemic is over soon and you can actually meet them in person easier that's all we can hope yeah, uh, for but, now it's still really exciting either way yeah, exactly. You're making your situation work for you. So I'm um, very happy for you. And thank you so much for everything. You're awesome. And thank you for sharing your story. And thank you, everyone, for listening. All right. See you in the next video, I'm guys. I'm going to miss you, Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> oh.